So I just finished doing a bunch of research on Docker and Golang, and I want to show you how to use Docker and Go and just get a basic web app running uh, using Go and Docker and how to do all that. And I'm just going to go through like some of the steps of my research. I've been doing research for a new course I'm creating on Golang Web Dev. It should be out, and make sure you go check it out at greatercommons.com, which is a site I'm building, which hopefully by the time you're watching this video, it's already launched. I'm sorry for the echo in this room. I'm just realizing it's got a really big echo. But if you can't find that course here, if you know, you've know you just watched this YouTube video and um, right after I posted it and our website's not up, you can also find it at Udemy Todd McLeod. And just look at my courses there so you'll find my web dev course there. But we're, we're gonna, I'm building my own platform with a couple of friends just so we could deliver educational services at a more cost effective rate and give teachers a better commission. So that's kind of what we're up to. It's gonna be cool. So I've just been doing all this research on Docker and I have to give a shout out to Nigel. So Nigel Poulton, because I watched some of his courses on Pluralsight. Nigel, you rocked it, thank you so much. But Nigel, those courses are great and learned a ton. And so uh, also like on YouTube, I think I just said this, I don't know, I've been doing a lot of reading. But YouTube, there weren't a lot of videos out there. Couldn't find anything that was helpful, which is why I'm impelled to just do this one straight out of the gate and show you kind of what I've learned. So the first thing you need to know about Docker, if you're new to Docker, is like back in the day when people build, built applications, web applications, like here's this what is Docker right here. But when they build web, web applications, then you know it's like basically one, one application per machine. So here's this application we built. We have no idea how demanded it's gonna be. So let's get a really powerful machine so it can handle as much demand as possible. And so people, bought like devs when businesses ask the devs what kind of machine do we get uh the fifty thousand dollar one the most powerful and expensive one we can afford and then they put their app on that machine and most often that machine would run at like 10 percent of its capacity so you had all these machines with unused capacity so people created virtual machines right and a virtual there's my dog barking my dog's crazy i've got two dogs one's a little bit nuts so they created virtual machines to run on top of these physical machines. So here's your physical machine and your host operating system. And there's this thing called a hypervisor, which will allow you to divide it up and put on a guest operating system. And these would each be sandboxed environments. So here's one virtual machine, one virtual machine, one virtual machine. And each of these machines would look like an independent machine, right? But they're all running on the same physical machine. So that physical machine, its resources could be used up to like 80, 90, 100% capacity. But the problem with this approach was every virtual machine had its own operating system, which came with a bunch of costs. One of the costs was you might actually have an actual cost. You might have to pay an operating system license. Another cost was it would take the physical resources of the machine to run that OS. Another cost was there's all kinds of management involved in having that operating system, like somebody had to manage all of that, right? And so a lot of costs for every virtual machine to have an operating system and so then came this idea of containers. And so containers are just virtual machines where the client has that guest operating system stripped out, right? And so you can see here, we have the infra infrastructure and the host operating system. And then instead of a hypervisor, we've got a Docker engine. And then we just have you know, our application and our bins and our libraries, our, our sandbox environment. So we don't have an operating system for each, you know, each client that we've given a little sandbox to. And yet at the same time, each of these sandbox environments looks like an, uh, its own unique machine. So these are containers. This is containerization. And go read Wikipedia's article on containers. It's pretty good. I like it. And, uh, and so anyhow, that's, uh, that's how a container works. And it's taking advantage of the Linux operating system and uh, how you could create different user spaces. And, you know, so each of these are using this host operating system, but the user spaces look like their own operating system, and it's all you know, sandbox and private with their own directories and libraries. So, you know, even though they're using the same operating system, it, they appear like their own machines and they're all contained. So it's all safe. And that's part of Linux, a feature of Linux, though you could run Docker across Windows and Mac and other places. So that's kind of a little bit of an introduction to what Docker is. So when you go and you, you read about Docker, you start learning about Docker, there's a, you know, I guess the first place to, to learn is just to go to the docs, right? Go to the docs area. And in the docs area, there's like this Docker engine right here. 
And then there's install and get started with Docker and you know some learn by examples. I found all three of these helpful. And then down here somewhere there's the Docker engine. Docker engine, Docker engine, extended engine. Engine reference right here, and then down here, API reference, no, command line reference. And then you have like, you know, if you want to see all your flags and everything, like when you're looking for the run command, you come down here and see all the flags for the run command. So I found all that really helpful when kind of looking through this stuff. And then this first thing I was just at, which was Docker documentation. That's not where I was at, but that's all right. So the idea behind Docker is that you have containers, you have images, and then from those images, you create containers. So you want to create an image. And uh, you could take a look at the different steps I have in the process by going to GitHub goes to 11, Golang Web Dev. So this URL. I'm just trying to make this quick without boring you with too much detail. And I want to show you how to make it work, even if you don't totally understand it. This will give you the steps to understanding it. So scroll down here, and I've got a Docker 43. And then a bunch of readmes in here. So here's this readme that talks about everything I just told you, right? And gives you some of the benefits. And then inside here, how to install, right? Some and get it running and check Docker version and all that. And then running images. You know, so a little bit about images and getting going with images. So bring an image down and turn it into a container and then run it. How do you build an image and push and pull? I haven't pushed up yet, so you'll see this change here in a second. So that's not the next one. All right, so the main thing is, is there are images and we can make containers. And there's also a place where we could go look at the images. So here's our image and then we make containers and the containers are, you know, little instances which are running. And we could just take one image and make as many instances as we want from that image as we need to scale something up. So uh, uh, the next piece of the puzzle that you need to know and to start using it is there's this place called Docker Hub. So if you just go to Docker Hub and then come in here and then you're like, okay, I need an image to do some Golang stuff. So if you wanted to, you might try bringing down you know, Ubuntu or whatever and setting it all up yourself. But somebody's already done that for you, and here's the official Golang Docker images which you can use. And so things that are prefixed, these are just by users. Like if you search for Todd McLeod, right, here's Todd McLeod Docker Whale. That's like the first thing I did, like this tutorial thing, and that's in those steps that I showed you. But, but coming back here, you go to the Golang one, and it doesn't have a prefix, because this is like an official, uh, I don't know if you call them, yeah, repository. It's official repository. So I go into Golang, and then there's different Docker images here which I could use, different versions of Go, and Alpine's like a really light one, and then just straight up 1.6 or 1.7 or 1.8, and these are like different versions or tags, right? So I would get the same thing if I did 1.8 RC1 or 1.8, they give me the same one, we'll see that. There's a Wheezy and an on build. What are all those things mean? So here's the Alpine where it tells you, hey, this is the really light one. And then, I don't know, it doesn't say Wheezy down here. There's a Windows service one. So I don't know what the Wheezy one does. But there's a on build. And so the on build one is the one I went with because I wanted to have some stuff built. <laughs> and there are these Docker files. When you build an image, create an image, right, you got to build a Docker file. So you can see the Docker file right here. And the first thing you do with the Docker file is you have this first line's got to be from. And so we're building this from Golang 1.8, right? And that was uh, this one right here. And you can see the Docker file is telling you Golang, that official repository, colon, and then the tag, right? Whatever the name was. So we're going to take one image, which is this Golang 1.8 image, and then we're going to put another set of stuff on it. And then we're going to call that an image, right? So you layer images to create a new image. That's how Docker works. So go, do, uh, Golang 1.8. And then we're going to run a command. We're going to make a dir. And we're going to make a directory forward slash go, forward slash source, forward slash app. Well, that starts to look like a Go workspace to me when I see the SRC folder, right? Well, that's making sense. And what does the dash P flag mean when you're, right? Because I'm always like, okay, what are those flags? You could go to the terminal. And I don't know if I did it over on this side. I didn't. So, you know, the first thing I tried was like, you know, help make dir. And then it said, try uh, info make dir. Info make dir. So you can see that right there. Try info make dir. And there's info make dir. And P 
creates intermediate, intermediate directories as required. If this option is not specified, the full path prefix of each operand must already. So it's basically like, hey, create this thing, and if the folders are already there, then cool, it's created. So P kind of does that. You can pause the video and read that if you want. I'm going to get out of this. There we go. And uh, so that was the first deal, seeing that one, and then working directory. Cause this makes the directory like, where is, am I working? Like, what's the current active directory, right, when, I, when this image gets launched into a container? And it's going to be go source app, and then there's a command, and it brings down, this is like a little magic go wrapper and run, and this is kind of like some JSON that you pass to the commands, and this is all in the documentation. Then on build, what's in my current copy, what's in my current directory to this location, and then on build run, and then download and install. So it does some go stuff here. A little bit of magic there, but like I said, I just want to show it to you running. So now we're going to create, we're going to actually do it, okay? So uh, first thing I'm going to do is uh, right here I have a just hello world, right? So just hello world. So HP listen and serve port 80 using default serve mux, handle funk at that route and all routes, index runs, and just right back is my response, hello from Docker container. And I have a Docker ignore file in here that ignores all readme files. So this file right here, this readme where I have the commands, which I haven't updated yet, will uh, be ignored. And then uh, here's my Docker file. So there's a plug in here, but basically here's a comment. That's a comment. And from Golang, that repository, and then I want this tag, right, like that version. And so I come over here, and that's the version I want. Let me see. I need to hit back. So it's right here, 1.8 on build. I'm getting that one. And... Uh, and then maintainers that, and that's it. And so wherever this Docker file's at, it includes all of these files into your new image. So I'm including this file in my image. And so that file is now in my image. I could then build this. And so to build it, the command is right here. All right, so here it's saying put that in, and then it does this, and then you go docker build t golang, my golang app. So I'm going to change the name because I just did this, and I was like totally stoked as running. So I'm going to call this just my app this time. And so docker build dash t, what does the t flag do in the, the build? Uh, it gives it a tag, but we could check that by coming back down here and looking at user guide uh, engine reference and looking at command line reference and then looking at build and then we can look for the dash T gives it a tag name optionally a tag in the name tag format so there we go All right so that's what that one does so it gave it this 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 name this tag and it's saying docker build and I'm giving it a name and everything in the current directory because right now ooh, I'm not yeah I am All right right now I'm in 06 hello go so 06, 43 Docker, 06, hello, go. And that's right here, 06, hello, go. So I'm going to do docker build dash T and give it a name, my app, and the current directory. Let's just make sure I got that right. Docker build dash T, a name, and then the current directory. So I'm going to build that. Successfully built. And the first time you do this, it's going to bring a whole bunch of stuff down and, you know, it'll take a little bit longer. And then the next thing is go run IT RM blah, 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 blah. And so you could go look at that run and look at all this stuff, right? Interactive and tell the typewriter terminal and uh, remove the container after you leave and give it a name and it's going to be my running app and then what do you want to run, which is this one. But that's not the command we want to run a web server. So to run a web server... Let me just come over here and uh, to run a web server, there we go, there's the command. So this is the command. So docker run, and this is detach, make it its own daemon, its own process, and map the port on the container to the machine. So this is the machine's port 80 to the container's port 80, and I called it my app. 
And so that's how you run it. And I'm going to hit run. So now that should be running. And if I do a Docker PS, I can see my app is running. Docker processes shows you all the containers that are running. And, uh, and so I should be able to go, look at that, it gives it crazy names to evil cold and I don't know what that is. But then I'm gonna do localhost 80 and uh, hello from a Docker container. Whoa, <laughs> totally happy man. It's like 10 days of reading and studying, watching Nigel's videos just to get that. So now I'm gonna do a Docker stop and drop in the ID of this container. And, uh, and then it'll tell me, okay, that one stopped. And if I do a Docker PS, it no longer shows that that process is running. And if I come back here to my page and refresh, that one's done. Uh, so pretty cool. And that's how you get Go up and running in a Docker container. And uh, that's the first step. And if you go watch, if you go through that Golang uh, web dev repository and go through all this, let me push all that code up for you. Git add dash dash all, git commit dash m. You're doing great. This is the one commit <laughs> I've decided to use for this entire repository. And then git push, throwing that up. And I've been trying to figure out the best stats to teach the Docker stuff in, you know, so people don't get mired in the details and get fast results. But let's take a look now. This is going to switch around. So you could get curl run and then, and then hello go. That's the one I just did. But if you go through the steps at that repo, Golang Web Dev, where to go? Dang it. Golang Web Dev, this one right here. Go through the steps on that, uh, you know, for 43 Docker, and then check out some of Nigel's trainings and come watch my training on greatercommons.com. Uh, that, that should be uh, get, get you going. So I'll do a few more things with Docker in the training. I want to uh, just see, you know, how we could get that up and running and explore it a little bit more. But this uh, training I'm putting together is an introduction to web development with the Go programming language. And uh, it's an awesome course. It's an awesome language. It's going to revolutionize. Not, I mean, hopefully I'll be able to contribute to making that happen and help educate people. But the Go programming language is revolutionizing the way people build web apps. And uh, it's uh, really fantastic. And this shows you how to use it all. And because there's a lot of confusion. People have a lot of confusion when they come to this language. But I've been teaching it at college and university level for, geez, uh, two years now. So... <laughs> a lot of sections and had a lot of learning uh, between myself and the students. We figured a lot of things out. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful, helpful to you. Uh, do me a favor and like this video. I know that sounds totally cornball, but uh, that gets like the video exposed more and you know, crazy enough, I'll just share this with you, right? But you come here to YouTube. Oh, you know, uh, I think where I need to go, I might be editing this out is not to that one, but to um, not AdWords, but what is it? AdSense. Cool. So you go to AdSense and uh, let me log in here. I hope it doesn't ask me for my phone because that's in the other room. Let's check this out. So AdSense, page views, 110,000 earnings. So last payment was $116 and the next one's 89. I don't know where I see like the days, right? 64,000 impressions. Last 28 days versus previous 28 days. Up 43, 64%. I don't know. So anyhow, it ends up to like 100 bucks every month or two or something like that if people watch all these videos. So, so like, like the video because <laughs> that gets more people to watch it. All right. Thank you very much. I hope this helped.